team were not so bright, in fact, you still wouldn't see significant detail, significant contrast in the image. This is because, in fact, for a non-absorbing specimen like this, the relationship between the diffracted beams and the zero-order beams is not half a wavelength. That difference is, in fact, more like a quarter of a wavelength. And waves that are a quarter of a wavelength out of phase one with another can never interfere destructively. But there is a, another way of getting contrast in an image of this kind. I'll put in here another kind of stop, which needs making concentric. You can probably see that this one is more transparent than the previous one. It's only slightly grey. We return to the image, ensure that it's precisely in focus, which is around there. Before I put it in, I'll just say that the grey area in the centre of this device is not only simply a little bit grey, so that it absorbs some of the light passing through, but it has a slightly different optical path from its surroundings. Its optical path is a quarter of a wavelength different from that of its surroundings. So the situation we have here is that the diffracted beams, due to the specimen, are one quarter of a wavelength different from the zero order. And if I push in this device, this is now adding another quarter of a wavelength phase difference between the two beams. We're ending up with half a wavelength, and half a wavelength gives us the possibility of destructive interference, which is what you see in the bottom image. So we're getting an image deriving from a diffraction pattern which looks as if it's the diffraction pattern of an absorbing object. An absorbing object has half a wavelength phase difference. This little bit I must ask you simply to believe at the moment. An absorbing ob object has half a wavelength phase difference between the diffracted beams and the zero order. A non-absorbing object has a quarter of a wavelength. With my little device here, I've added a quarter of a wavelength and further quarter of a wavelength phase difference to the zero order and we're ending up with half a wavelength. I've converted the diffraction pattern of a non-absorbing object into the diffraction pattern of an absorbing object and so the image that we see is the image of an absorbing object. This is a, an appropriate point to say that the image that you get is built from the diffraction pattern. If you manipulate the diffraction pattern so that it looks as if it's the diffraction pattern from some other object, then you see the image that that diffraction pattern dictates. In this case, you are looking at a highly contrasty image which looks as if it's the image of absorbing black lines, but in fact they are non-absorbing lines. This technique is called phase contrast. Here we're doing it for the purpose of demonstration with a pinhole of illumination, which everybody knows they shouldn't really use. I'm doing this only for, because it's helpful for demonstration. And in the back focal plane of the objective, I'm using a little phase contrast spot, which coincides with the image of that pinhole of illumination. In the real world, phase contrast microscopes are not built that way. They're built with an illuminating annulus, a ring of light, because it's rotationally symmetrical and better fills the aperture of the objective. And you can see there the diffraction pattern is multiple rings 
instead of simply multiple pinholes or multiple slits. We have here the phase contrast area, the phase ring on what is called a phase plate, which I can push into coincidence. We'll now have a look at the image, no contrast, push in the ring on the phase plate, and immediately we see high contrast. So here we have a method of producing a visible image from an invisible object. People often worry about whether the image is a true picture of the object, and you almost heard me say true in inverted commas there, because it's even a little bit difficult to decide what is the truth. But in this case, you don't want a true image of the object. If you've got a, an invisible object, presumably a true image is an invisible image. In this case, our image is an artifact, but it's a deliberate artifact, a well understood artifact, and a useful artifact. So um, the concept of the image being true to the specimen is not really one that we ought to consider. In this case, of course, the, the, the image is at least sufficiently true for you to get good information about the specimen, and phase contrast has been wonderfully useful in the study of living cells, for example. I could show you, and will now, an example where the image appears to be a little bit less true I'll go back to the illuminating pinhole there and move to another grating which we have on the slide. It consists of a sort of chessboard of little holes. They repeat left and right, as did the lines on the other grating we saw, but of course they also repeat up and down. So we see here a two-dimensional diffraction pattern. What you see there is just the bottom half of it, and there should be a similar half off the top of the screen, but we're not looking at it. This gives me a chance to put in my little slit again into the objective. And if I do that, I can allow just that much of the diffraction pattern to pass through and to form the image. You've seen a diffraction pattern like that before and are probably able to deduce what the image must be. It's reasonably common knowledge that it's possible to deduce images from diffraction patterns. This is done in electron diffraction. It was very famously done using X-ray diffraction, working out the structure of DNA from diffraction patterns. And here, to take a very simple example, we can deduce the image from that diffraction pattern there. I'll reveal it. There we see that the image that comes from that diffraction pattern must be a series of vertical lines, even though the object is both horizontal and vertically arrayed spots, that image is vertical lines. I can twist this round to give an image of horizontal lines or diagonal lines of various kinds in between. So you see, you get the image that depends on those parts of the diffraction pattern that you built the image from. Normally, you don't indulge in tricks like this. Normally, the image is built from as much of the diffraction pattern as can get through the aperture of the objective. That isn't, of course, ever the whole diffraction pattern, but it's as much as the aperture of 